Well, ladies and gentlemen, today's stream is actually sponsored by Newverse, the creators of Dragoner Silent Gods. And how you probably noticed in the title, we are going to have a look at the brand new season, season two, coming in just a couple of days, at least. Uh, that's what I think for my server, and that looks absolutely amazing. We have over 30 brand new champions coming in, new storyline, a new map, a new Dungeons and Dragons collaboration event coming in as well, uh, probably uh, mid-season if I'm not mistaken. And if by now, by any chance, you've been living under a rock and you're not familiar with Dragoner Silent Gods, is an open world high fantasy RPG game with Western graphics and it's been a tremendous success since the very beginning, guys. It uh, scored over 10 million downloads in less than a month and is ranked as number one in more than 10 different locations. So the game has really, really awesome graphics and it does have some tabletop uh, mechanics like the dice roll, which kind of like signifies the, the RNG character creation, which is pretty interesting as well and yes overall the game starting from season two will have well over 200 unique characters and yes they do look amazing guys this is probably one of the main things that really caught my eye and not only that but how you may notice all these got enhanced okay so before this looked good as well but now it looks even better so the text all the all the details on on the on this page got enhanced so when we're talking about graphics they're actually constantly improving their grass uh, their graphics it happened the same from season zero to 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 season one for example etc now the game is available to download guys uh on pc you can download it directly from their website and run their own client you can download it on the epic games you can download it on steam you can download it on mac you can download it on iOS, you can download it on Android, and never skip a bit. It's a cross-platform game that works on multi multiple devices and is awesome. If you're going out, you can have Dragoner with you. If you're at home chilling uh, at the PC, you can play Dragoner there as well, you know, so that's actually pretty, pretty cool. Welcome, welcome it. What's up? How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. You missed the end of the tournament last night. Who won? Uh, you have three guesses. We had three opponents and you have three guesses. Now we're going to start today, guys, by actually having a look at uh, the new gear sets. And then we're going to check a couple of, uh, a couple of different, uh, different things, you know. And um, we have brand new bosses coming to the game too. We have uh, the dungeon bosses being enhanced with new skills, which sounds very interesting. I didn't have a chance to actually look at any of them. So this is still the old location on the map. But we're going to start unlocking new locations from here. So we're going to go on a boat trip. Just kind of like a spoiler alert. And we'll be unlocking a whole new location. We have a new race of uh, characters coming to the game. The mermaids. We have three different architectures of uh, damage dealers coming. Burn, uh, Thunderbolt and uh, Ice Blast which are actually very, very interesting. We have some awesome heroes coming to the game. So a lot of things happening in Season 2, guys. A lot of things happening in Season 2, which is great. We have quite a few quite a few things to, to cover. New artifacts, of course, new gear sets, and that's what we're going to start with, yeah. You did, you got, the, you got the guess right. Now, I'll be honest, guys. I'll be honest. The beginning didn't went good, and I feel like, because I, I kind of like stayed and thought about it. Why why the beginning didn't went that good? The very first fight, I messed up the positioning of one of the champions. That made me lose the fight because my Frost team uh, won the, the other two fights against his Frost team, you know? And after, I used the, I used, uh, I used the, the Necrosis straight after the, the Frost and that was not allowed, so I had to redo the fight. And that kind of messed me up because I was like, oh, he saw my team, blah, blah, blah. So that... I don't know if I won the fight after or I lost it, but either way, we've done two draws. He won four, I won four. So it's not like I've done extremely bad against him, but the whole idea is I haven't won more than he won, you know? And then I was at a, quite, a bit of a, quite a bit of a point difference and I had quite a, quite a good comeback. You know, I had quite a good comeback after. And uh, 
yeah, I'm going to upload that video on YouTube most probably tomorrow, guys, okay? That's going to take me a lot of editing because it's like a six-hour long video. But coming back to the main topic for today, guys, Season 2, Season 2. And we're going to... I cannot wait to get all the rewards that we are getting from uh, the previous season, but we're going to dive into that in just a second. New set. So the Gambler set is here to stay. Most, most probably, you are all familiar with this set. It gives you attack, attack speed. Now, when you are uh, using a 3 piece set, you are gaining enemy max HP damage, okay? Which is very, very good. Like, this set was very important against bosses, especially against the Vortex, you know? And I'm glad that the set is still, uh, is still here. If by any chance you're not familiar with Dragon Energy just yet, you have 3 piece sets and 2 piece sets. At the moment, we don't have any 4 piece sets. So, when you are using your 4th piece of gear, like, the helmet, the weapon, the chest, or the gloves can be a broken piece from any set whatsoever. I actually love that idea. I would like in the future to see different sort of uh, uh, different sort of sets as well, like four piece sets. You know, maybe a one piece set. All all sort of different things could potentially happen in the future, of course. Then the next set that we are getting in as brand new is the Emperor's Might, guys, and this right here gives you attack and skill haste. This is replacing the rat, the rat set, and the, a three-piece is a brand new effect. When the wearer deals damage to an enemy with lower attack, the current damage will be increased based on the difference value of attack. When the wearer's attack reaches 200% of that of the target, the damage bonus will be increased to the maximum value of 50%. So, you know what this means, guys. When you have Thank you, opponents. When you have a lot of support champions that are not meant to deal damage in the fight, this will be very effective against them. Or at least I am assuming it will be very effective because let's, let's imagine you're taking your Tonalan against Frerbart. Frerbart will have high defense, very low attack. Tonalan will, uh, will have very high attack. So because of it, I feel like you're going to get a lot of extra damage against it. Now, when we're talking about bosses, that's something that unfortunately I'm not uh, uh, I'm not aware of. I don't know what sort of stats the bosses have. Do they have higher uh, higher attack usually? What sort of stats they have? So it's pretty hard to say it. But I would assume the bosses have uh, most probably higher attack than our champions. You know. So this is one of the new sets. Then we have the Abyssal Curse. This is replacing uh, the old uh, plat the old platinum chest, and. Again, you're getting attack and enlightenment. I actually like this one more. I think this can be very, very powerful on champions that deal uh, derivative damage, you know. So at three pieces, you're going to get derivative damage dealt by the wearer ignores 20% of the enemy's defense. Now, I'm not 100% sure how much more damage you will get to do with this compared to a different set, but it just feels that it's, it's designed for champions that deal derivative damage and i hope that this set or something similar will stick in the game forever together with the gambler you know unless they're planning to bring in more uh, improved versions in uh, in the future but this this is actually a very very interesting set and i feel like it's going to to improve the damage from a lot of uh, a lot of champions you know then moving over to the next one the inventor's inspiration which again is a brand new set and this is replacing the Executioner, the one that was kind of like the equivalent of a Savage, the Ignore Defense one. At two-piece, you're still getting a 15% uh, attack and 10% crit rate, which is very good because we still needed to have this set to kind of like help us to get the crit rate that we need on our heroes. But the effect changed at three pieces. Every time the wearer casts a battle skill or an ultimate skill, they receive an 8% damage bonus for 15 seconds up to four times. Now, I can imagine this set being very effective on Radiant uh, Radiance heroes where you're using Laurentil and you're constantly boosting your ultimate energy where you actually have a chance to overlap the 15 seconds with your uh, with your ultimate. I feel like it's going to be really uh, really good on those ones and you're going to get up to 32% extra damage which sounds very very nasty. Then of course we have the Heart of the Gambler which we already covered, the Ancestral Protection the main set for tanks is here to stay, guys. It brings you damage reduction and 
is taking 15% of the damage from the entire team on uh, himself, basically. But this time around, this time around, you're not getting defense and HP from the set. You are getting 60 resistance and 15% HP. So even though the set is here, is a bit different. And I kind of like the idea to have something like this because resistance is mainly needed on your tanks. Now it's true, 15% defense is important. But having the 60, uh, 60 resistance, I feel like is, uh, is better. What's up, Pikachu? How are you doing? What's up? What's up? How is it going? So the ancestral protection is here. Our champion won. Indeed, sir. Indeed. Then we have the Cyril's Whisper, which is a brand new set. And I'm a very big fan of this set, actually. So this is replacing the Blue Oak set, which was giving uh, skill haste and enlightenment before. Or no, HP and enlightenment. HP and enlightenment. My bad. So this one will give you skill haste and HP instead. And will be very nice on a lot of support champions. Like, I feel like it's easier to get the 20 enlightenment than the skill haste from, uh, from substats, you know? So it's going to be very helpful for uh, healers and uh, other champions like that, you know? Even for other support that are meant to deal damage, because you don't need to use an attack one now, you know, uh, that are not meant to use damage, sorry. Because uh, you don't need to use an attack one instead. But right here, when the wearer successfully inflicts a debuff, all allies gain additional 15% attack for 10 seconds. And that's a three-piece set, guys, which is massive, okay? You can, you can have that increased attack on your team all the time, all the time, literally all the time. Merci, 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 merci. And guys, I, I missed to kind of like point it out, but if you haven't downloaded Dragon or Silent Ghost just yet, you will have a link in chat if you're watching it live on stream right now. You can click the panel that you're seeing below. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the description down below or in the pinned comment and you're going to find the link to download Dragonair Silent Gods and join in the fun, guys. Season 2 is almost here. So this is probably going to be one of the, one of the best sets that uh, they're adding to the game. Then we have the... Molis's Blessing. You're getting accuracy and skill haste, but at three pieces, it changed. After casting an ultimate skill, the wearer heals the ally with the lowest HP. So you're going to get some healing as well. Signature, what's up? Does the season start in six hours or in one day and six hours like the banner says? On the 15th. The season uh, starts on the 15th. Uh, where it says six hours, it ends in six hours. And uh, basically, you have like a day of a uh, day of uh, fun just a gap i think yeah so this will constantly heal your the champion with the lowest hp so if you don't have the best support champions in your team guys this set will actually be very uh, very useful you know then we have i think uh, the holy hunter which is the same the stun set you're still getting accuracy and resistance the stun Seems to be 20% chance instead of 30. I think it was 30% chance to stun, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I think this got a bit of a, a, bit of a rebalance. But I think it was 30%. I have a feeling that was 30. If I'm thinking about it, and if my, uh, my uh, memory is good, you know, my visual memory is, uh, is 30, yeah. But these are all the, the new sets, guys. The rest are just the epics, you know, so those are... Still the same, just following uh, one tier lower than the, than the legendaries. Talking about artifacts. So we have quite a few new uh, artifacts, legendaries, and epics. You are going to be able to get two legendary ones from a completing content. The Pillar of Trials and the Fey Mander. And this time around, they're actually, in a way or another, better. In a way or another, they are better. So this one is from the Fey Mander, the Ravatrix Roots. And you're getting a flat HP and attack percentage. And what you're getting is that uh, you're getting attack and HP, 15% uh, from each. And if you're using uh, non-legendary heroes, it's double. It's still the same 20? Okay, I don't know why I remember 30. I, I really don't, don't know why I remember 30. It must be something else. So this is a pretty interesting one. I'm not sure if I would drop a different epic artifact to get this one on my hero. So you could potentially... I mean, I can't imagine get getting 
getting like a hundred percent attack from here. I feel like, yeah, it it might it might be good. It might be good to get a hundred percent attack from here, and HP too. You know, so I can imagine using this one. Then you have the everlasting diamond. This is great for champions like uh, Catherine, champions like Hexandra, champions like Megan, champions that are healing and champions that need resistance. So you're getting enlightenment and HP on uh, on uh, the top stats. So not the best necessarily for Megan because you don't really need enlightenment there. And then the healer from the wearer increases the healing from the wearer increases by 25%. Meanwhile, the wearer receives an additional 50 or 125 resistance max. This is going to be such a good one. Such a good one, guys. I'm a big fan from uh, of uh, of this one and this comes from the from the pillar of trials. Then of course you have two epics. Not a very big fan of them. You have the Cosmos Crucible gives you the defense and resistance. So this one, I feel like if this one would have had no time time on it, it would have been good. But like this is just useless in my opinion. The wearer and the, the nearby allies gain an additional 35 to 60 resistance for 15 seconds. 15 seconds is not, is not enough. They don't even get to use their ultimate, most of the, the enemies, you know. So definitely not that good. And then we have the 100 eye drop. You're getting a defense and HP. When the wearer takes damage for every buff on the attacker, the damage is reduced by 3.5%. So I think that while it's a decent one, most of the times they will have one, two, maximum three buffs. Most of the most of the enemies, even for arena, even for PVE content, and the damage reduction that you'll be getting is not that big. True, if you max this, is going to be a, with three debuffs, fifteen percent. But I feel like there are much better artifacts that uh, you can use instead. You know, to really give you better better value all around. I feel I just I just think they're they're better, you know. Even this one is better in my opinion, the banner of oath, you know. Then we have a few more legendary ones, guys, which look pretty awesome. We have three exclusive artifacts, and let's start with the with the helm of the frostbirds. This is the Beldel exclusive, which is a brand new legendary champion, and you're getting crit rate and attack. Damage dealt by runaway will be increased by a specific amount, depending on what level you have it, but 10% to start with. While the upper limit of the stackable damage of Frost's favor will be increased to 200%. So this has the potential to, to bring in a lot of damage. And they will be very, very nice for uh, uh, a lot of content, these new, new uh, Frost heroes. Then we have the Crown of Order. This is my most wanted uh, legendary that's coming to the game. Just purely because of design. It looks so amazing. But we're going to go over the summoning events in just a second. I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know. The rewards from the previous season and everything else. Attack and crit damage. Per contest, lawful retribution will ignore 10% uh, of the target's defense. Sorry. All the way up to 35. While the damage bonus ratio provided by each stack of overwhelm will be increased to 4%. Per contest. Is, a, is an awesome hero though. Then we have another exclusive, which is for the uh, Asketius, which is the burn hero. He has the potential to do insane AoE damage. You're getting attack and crit damage. Asantius gains an additional 20% crit rate. Easy peasy, you, can only be, uh, you only need to build him with 80 crit rate. And that's such a massive boost in terms of uh, stats, guys, because you can get extra crit damage, you can get extra attack, and it's just generally making your life so much better when you need to build champions with 80 crit rate. If you if you use tunnel, then you know what I'm talking about. Hegion, what's up, bros? Salute. Salute. So, Incineration's damage bonus from Dispelling Burn is increased as well. The damage bonus for each stack of Burn Dispelled is increased to 150% maximum, which is nice. And then we have a few, a few different ones, guys, which are pretty good. We have the uh, Aurora Telescope. It gives you attack and HP. When the wearer uh, deals damage to an enemy with higher defense, the current damage will boost, uh, will boost based on the defense ratio between them. When the target's defense reaches 130%, and the wearer of the wearer, sorry, the damage boost will reach the maximum 20%, all the way up to 35. Meanwhile, when the wearer takes a critical hit, the damage is reduced by 15%. 
that's actually very, very good. It's, it's a good damage reduction on top of whatever set you're running already, you know, and passives, etc. So it's going to be a nice one. Then you have the Cuckoo Cantis Bindings. I like the name of this one. You're getting attack and accuracy. And as the battle starts, the wearer has a 100% chance to inflict attack penalty on the enemy with the highest attack for 10 all the way up to 20 seconds. Now, if the wearer's attack is higher than the targets, this uh, effect cannot be removed. It's great for Arena. This is going to be very strong for PvP. Just imagine you have the enemies trying to, trying to kill your uh, champions quick. You're putting attack penalty on them. You're just destroying their damage. So it's gonna be it's gonna be very nice. Then we have the new towers shears, HP and attack percentage. When the wearer deals damage to a target, they also reduce the target's max HP by 15% of the damage dealt, up to 35% of the target's max HP. This effect does not apply to boss enemies. I feel like this is the very first thing in the game of this uh, of this type. We have a uh, no heroes or no other artifacts that can uh, reduce the target's max HP. So this will be very, very powerful against champions like Mitrasi, champions that constantly revive. I feel like it, it will be very, very impactful. Definitely a good, uh, a good uh, addition. Then we have the Titan Rib. Gives you attack and resistance. Every time the wearer successfully resists a debuff, they gain an extra damage bonus with an uh, indefinite duration. The effect stacks up to 5 stacks. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this. I do think uh, you can build some very niche damage dealers with resistance, but I don't necessarily think that is something that you will do. Maybe, maybe this will make a lot of people to rethink the way they're building champions in Season 2 for Arena. Either way, I think it does have some potential, some niche potential, but I'm not the biggest, the biggest fan of it. Of, uh, of it, you know. Blooms of Prina, attack and attack percentage. When the wearer consumes ice crystals, their next battle skill deals extra 15% damage. So, how you've noticed, this is kind of like more for uh, the frost heroes, for the new, the new type of uh, ice blast heroes. Then we have one for each one of the other additions, one for burn, oil of skyfire, attack and attack. Every time the wearer applies burn, they gain an extra 2% attack up for 10 seconds. The effect stacks up to 15 times. So that can be quite a bit. Quite a bit. But I can, cannot imagine uh, landing, applying burn for 15 times to get 150% attack, you know. And of course, you have one for the Thunderbolt heroes. And uh, this will give you attack and attack. The Tempest World Drum. When the weather deals damage for each enemy on the field under the effect of Electrocuted, the damage is increased by... 3.5 all the way to 6. So these are all the new artifacts coming to the game, guys. All the new gear sets coming to the game. Some of them are definitely very, very interesting. Of course, we do have a bunch of other things next to the new heroes. And let's start directly with the events. So right here, you will see that we have some new summoning pools, guys. One thing that I really like, and I'll be dropping all of my summons... In, uh, in this specific banner right here. They will have an exclusive pool of all of the brand new heroes coming in Season 2. So that means that if you're summoning on the Odyssey feature summons, which will be in-game for two weeks from the beginning of the season, if I'm not mistaken, and you go to Summon Details, you will only be able to summon legendary and epic heroes that have been added to the game in Season 2 not the OG ones, which means that all the exclusive ones are in here. Every single one of them is here. And this is your best chance to put your hand on your most favorite hero from the new ones. And I'll be going pretty ham with everything that I will have. All the rewards that I'll be collecting from season one will be dropped in here because they are some amazing new heroes. Amazing, amazing new heroes. We have quite a few epics and uh, yeah, the chances to summon are still the same, but we have some very, very powerful heroes, you know, which we're going to come back to it in uh, just a second. I don't know 100% sure to tell you if the Planeswalker summoning event will be there, but that's something that we're going to have to find out. Of course, you will have the Celestial Alternate Summon 1 and Summon 2 that uh, 
will gradually start uh, in the season. You won't have both of them at the same time. You know, they kind of like overlap. You will have your regular Heliolite summons. And when you reach 80 summons, you'll be getting a random legendary hero from there. And talking about the new season and the rewards, guys, of course, the main idea of seasonal content in Dragonair is to constantly grind and improve your things. So at the season exclusives, which right now are not ranked because we are on the test server, you are getting rewards, exclusive rewards, and you, are, uh, you will have a seasonal shop. So, for example, this is what we have right here. And they are improved. They are definitely improved for a season two, the rewards. You can see just the, the wire marrow of everything and everything else that you're getting. But you will get Heliolite dice. You will get wire marrow. You will get an exclusive uh, cosmetic, which will be kind of like a, a mount, a horse, a flaming horse, which looks pretty cool. But you have these uh, premium tickets, guys, okay? And now I know this says season three because the, the test server is in season two. But these ones will increase your chance to summon legendary champions. So the mercy right now to summon a legendary is at 35 dice. This will take it to 10 summons. So 10 summons and bang, you're guaranteed a legendary champion. Up to two times if you're getting 20 of these. Now the legendary ones will increase your chance to get a brand new legendary and is a very high chance to get a brand new legendary from the new season. The epics will increase your chance to get a brand new legendary and some of the new heroes are not available in the summoning pool. I feel like I prefer these ones if I'm trying to get some of the OG champions, you know. That's what I'm getting. I'm going to get 20 of these actually. And the rare ones will increase your chance to get a legendary champions at 10 summons, okay? which is still very good. And the rewards are going as following. Everybody, everybody will get at least one mercy of 10 summons, which is awesome. You're going to get a guaranteed legendary in 10 summons, you know. Then on top of it, you will have the seasonal shop. Now, the whole idea is to rank as, uh, as best as possible in the previous season to get more rewards. You know, you're collecting the Echo F Clepsidra, which will be converted into pure sand core on a ratio from 100 to 1. And I will have 3,400 plus, 300, 400 plus uh, uh, sand core. So I'll be able to purchase pretty much everything from the seasonal shop. But if you go to exchange, you go to season shop. And how you may notice right here, you will have the shop. Now, this is the season 2 shop. And this is what you're going to be able to purchase. So I'm going to be able to purchase with my ranking, which is number 69. Funny enough, even if I wanted to try and get a number, was no chance. And I was, uh, I, I, I'm going to be able to get everything. You have bronze, silver, and gold for the, for the shop. The better you rank, the higher the, the shop that you're unlocking. And I'm going to get 15 Heliolite dice, 500 wire marrow, 10 epic scrolls, 5 legendary scrolls, I'm going to get some awesome cosmetics. And a lot of people don't know. The Misty Lens will allow you to change your character. So when you start Dragon Air Silent Gods, you will be able to pick from four different classes. Okay. And they're pure cosmetic. Some of you guys maybe got tired of playing with uh, Elf. Some of you might uh, be tired of playing with Human. So you want to change in Season 2. You're going to be able to purchase one Misty Lens with one Sand Core and redo your character. We do need dice. One dice, one ticket. Of course you need dice. Yeah, yeah, of course. You need 10 dice to, to summon to get one legendary in 10 summons. That's what I said, yeah? But you will need a dice, of course. It's not, it's not like a different summoning currency. It's kind of like a, an empowerment for the, for the dice, you know? And of course, you can get the uh, frames, avatars, I actually made the math and 3,400 will allow me to purchase everything from here except Starlight, Stone Dice, which I wouldn't purchase anyway from here, and the Gold, which again, I wouldn't purchase from here either. Yeah, so you need, you need the Dice. It's just basically empowering your Dice. But we will have, 
we will have a summoning uh, a summoning banner for them as well. It's not available right now in in uh, on this server, but you will have one of those because uh, in uh, season one, once we move from uh, season zero, I had no idea that they exist, you know. And uh, my mercy uh, kicked in at ten summons. Yeah, I got Gulanda like that. But these are all the new heroes, guys. We're gonna go over over the new heroes today as well. I know some of you probably watched the other YouTube video that I've posted. Some of you maybe didn't. To 20, there are the rest maybe all in the new ones. Season 2 heroes, yeah. But before, I feel like I want to do a few summons. Let's see. Because I have, I have a lot of wire metal on this test server and quite a, quite a lot of... Uh, Quite a lot of summons, you know. Will it be available to summon to... No, this is the test server. So the... Season 2 will start on uh, on the 15th. That's what I'm aware of. But let's... Let's, let's see. Hopefully I'm going to have very good luck on my account when I'm going to summon... Uh, Whoa, if I start like this, if I start like this on my account, my God, wow, you know, if I start like this on my account, when the new season is here, I'll be pumped AF, I'll be wow, you know, wow. Yeah, day 15 will be six hours of maintenance during a uh, night for me. So I think they announced the maintenance from uh, 00, 00 UTC uh, for six hours there. Making the transition to season two. Your free to play account got four legendaries, including Erich. Will your summon improve next season? Uh, depending on what ranking you got, you will get tokens as well that will improve your mercy to 10 summons. Yeah. So you will be getting uh, basically uh, a legendary or maybe two pretty fast, but it's based on your ranking. I'm not sure if it's one or two. So, wow, if I start like this, I'll be super pumped. I hope so. I hope so. I think I will have around 100, 150 summons. Oh, my God. If I start like this, I'm going to run around the house. I'm going to run around the house. No way. <laughs> double, double. This is the first time that happened. This is the first time that happened. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That is crazy. That is crazy. And there's some nice legendaries. But we're going to check all their kits in a, in a second, guys. <laughs> no way. I know. I've actually done some, I've done like a hundred plus summons and I barely got any, you know, but now it feels like the RNG is paying back, you know. Wow, four legendaries like that, just crazy. Crazy, crazy. You gotta love it. You gotta love it when, when the RNG is in your favor like this, you know. I was gonna say, no way I'm getting another one now. No way I'm getting another one now. Yeah, I know, if, if my baby's asleep, Miss Bora won't be very happy. Chopfish, this is a this is a test server. This is a test server. It's an exclusive test server for season two. So right now we are summoning on the exclusive season two summoning pool that only has legendaries and epics from season two, guys. So if you're really interested to put your hand on some of those new champions, make sure you're saving your Helia Light from uh from now on moving to, to the next season. We got a pretty interesting epic as well, but we're gonna check all their kits in a second. Okay, double epic in here. Because there, uh, there's a limit amount, limited amount of epic champions in the pool, guys. There, are eight, if I'm not mistaken, eight or something like that. It's very likely to get dupe epics, you know. In this, because there are only eight epics. But it's fine. You're getting essence of creation, you know. Triple epics. Oh, tri re really triple, triple, you know, like triple, triple. <laughs> triple, triple. The epics are fairly decent. Oh, and we got another legendary. You still have five days on your server and you saved around 20 Helios. Oh, nice. And with the rewards, you hope to be 30 plus. Yeah, you, you should be. The ranking and then what you can purchase from the seasonal shop. You might be 40 plus, actually. I I almost YOLO the well, most of them, yeah. What else we have? Let's see. 
Oh, another one and another one. Ooh, she looks so awesome design-wise. She is insane. I really love the design of this hero. I'm not feeling her kit so much, honestly, but the design is sick, yeah. Uh, Chop Fisher is, is a bit, honestly, but I think they might they might do some sort of different catch-up mechanics in the future because they will have to, you know. They will have to. A lot of feedback will be will be dropping on them and they will have to to adjust that. You have 15 Helio and 51 Starlight. Nice. That's awesome. I think I have 100 plus Starlights. Okay, we got another Legendary. We'll stop here and that. Man, this tank. This tank. He's one of my most wanted out of the new Legendaries. He's very powerful for Arena. Very, very powerful. I think I was talking about him last night, if I remember correctly on stream, right? But he is uh, once in a blue moon, guys. That's, that's right, because... The Odyssey feature summons only features heroes from the new season. Here they are. All the legendaries, all the epics. So let's start with the one that I just summoned. Malak. He's a new tank. Poison. Uh, a poison tank. Look how badass he looks, man. Look at that. Everything on him looks so, so cool. <laughs> I know, Clicker. Yeah. I got lucky. I got lucky. I, I hope my uh, my account will be that lucky, you know. By the way, your videos have really helped me season one. You're looking forward to season two. Thank you, thank you. Stay tuned for them because there'll be plenty of them coming for season two, for season three, season four, and many more to come. So Malak, guys, has a defense aura for Arena, 45%. Then, when inflicted with control or ultimate down, the hero gains healing and 15% ultimate energy. Also, if the hero fails to resist control or ultimate down effects, there is an extra 40% chance to nullify those effects. So it's a very good counter against crowd control. The battle skill deals damage to, a, to an enemy and gives a bit of healing. But Malak is badass, not only looks badass. Dispels all control from allies, gives control immunity, deals damage, and puts attack penalty with the ultimate skill. This is so, so powerful. So, so powerful as a, as a skill. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You feel sorry for the head he's holding? I'm not, because he's kind of like an undead creature, a, a zombie creature there, you know? Or maybe, maybe was a nice, a nice person before and he got poisoned. But moving over to the exclusives. Let's check the exclusives. So you have a... Ascatius, which is the new burn, the new architecture of, uh, of damage. Attack aura for uh, all battles. The passive basic attack uh, deals additional 50% fire damage to the enemies in three adjacent tiles in front of the heroes. When the basic attack deals damage to enemies under burn, increases the hero's ultimate energy by 5%, which allows him to rotate pretty fast with the, with the ultimate skill, you know. The battle skill, AoE, surrounding the, uh, the area around him, because he is a melee hero, deals 350% fire damage to enemies with a chance of inflicting a stack of burn for 10 seconds, which allows him enough time to move over to the ultimate. Dispels all enemies, burn, and deals uh, 500 attack fire damage to them, then triggers blast on all enemies with each enemy as the blast center, dealing additional 190% attack fire damage to surrounding enemies for each stack of burn previously dispelled from the enemy. So if you have 10 stacks of burn by any any chance on enemies, um, you're going to deal 1,900 extra attack to the enemies, guys. That is so crazy. So, so crazy. And yes, how you probably noticed, this is going to be extremely, extremely uh, uh, good for uh, waves. Now, I don't see him that powerful for Arena. And the reason why I'm saying it is because in Arena, you spread your champions quite far. This needs to be kind of like uh, next to each other. I feel like it's going to work exactly how it works in the fire domain. If you're putting one box distance uh, in between characters, the burn detonation will not be there. So it won't trigger the extra damage on your characters. But I might be wrong. I haven't played them yet. We're going to do, we're gonna do a bit of playtesting uh, today. Uh, on the 15th, you know, we have time to, to try them out quite a bit. And how you may notice, the blast damage is increased by 75% for each each one of the, the stacks, you know. So that's that's pretty nasty. 
Actually, I got it wrong. Yeah, wait, because I, I was re I, I missed the dot. So it's just 190 for the for the burn that is, is active. But then for each stack of burn previously dispelled. So if you have 10 of them, 10 stacks of burn dispelled, the damage will be increased uh, by 75 for each one of them, you know. So that can be 750% attack more. My bad. And it's not 750% attack. It's the whole damage from the skill, you know. I just uh, realized I read the thing wrong. And he has 1,770 attack, which is very nice. Very good survivability too, considering that he's a, he's a melee hero. Then this is my favorite, look-wise. Perkunte. He looks so badass with a bolt in his hand, man. Look at that. Thunderbolt. Uh, attack in a arena. You have the passive. When on the field, the hero gains one stack of overwhelm with unlimited duration whenever electrocuted is triggered. This effect cannot be dispelled and is capped at 30 stacks. At the same time, the hero casts a lightning dealing 40% attack damage to the enemy with the lowest HP. The fewer enemies on the field, the higher the damage, up to 500% of the base damage. So this makes him great on against single targets as well, you know. Zeus, yeah, he looks awesome. It will be fun in arena and just generally a fun. I'm I'm trying to get this one. I really hope I'm gonna get him and the exclusive. You know that's that's my goal. Then of course we have the battle skill, and electrocuted is a new type of debuff. Deals 220 attack to enemies within range with a chance of inflicting electrocuted on them for uh, eight seconds. Then triggers thunderbolt once on them immediately. So. Thunderbolt basically triggers Electrocuted again, and Electrocuted invokes a lightning chain at the carrier's position every 4 seconds, dealing 35% attack lightning derivative damage to the carrier and up to 4 additional targets, which makes it AoE. And the thing is, this will be landed AoE again already. So when you're triggering this, all these beams will move from target to target. I think, you know, it's going to be fun. The ultimate covers the entire area, strikes all enemies twice, like Talendor, each triggering Thunderbolt once and dealing 275% attack lightning damage. For every stack of Overwhelm on the hero, increases the damage of this skill by 3%. All stacks of Overwhelm on the hero will be cleared after this skill, uh, after the skill is cast. I'm not sure what over uh, Overwhelm does, honestly, because I haven't seen anything in the description, so... I'm not sure if uh, it's increasing the damage, it's increasing the attack, what exactly it uh, it does, you know. Then we have the Ice Blast exclusive legendary. And uh, she looks pretty cool, the dwarf. Looks looks nice. It's kind of like she stole Trollgar's weapon, right? Attack, uh, uh, crit damage aura for all battles, my bad. The passive, if the hero has Ice Crystals after casting a battle skill, consumes one stack of Ice Crystal to cast the skill again. Damage dealt from the current skill will be increased by 25% upon triggering this effect, up to 100% of the base damage. If the skill isn't triggered again within 3.5 seconds, the accumulated damage bonus is emptied. So these heroes are all about battle skills, you know, that will be the main, uh, the main trick, the main damage will come from there. Deals 250% attack cold damage to the enemy while ignoring their shield. Then the hero gains crit damage up for 5 seconds. The ultimate strikes an enemy 3 times, each dealing 285% uh, attack, with a chance of uh, gaining a stack of Ice Crystal. So the Ice Crystal, the carrier's battle skill will, be, uh, will gain an additional effect, and the Ice Crystal stacks up to 5 times. So you're going to gain extra, extra damage from there and extra effects, which is pretty nice. Then, let's move over to the other heroes. We have the Pirate, Carf. Another burn hero. When the hero skill hits an enemy inflicted with burn, deals uh, additional derivative damage to the enemy and surrounding enemies. This could potentially be a new type of uh, flora. Who knows? Who knows? Then, of course, you have uh, a single hitter here. Strikes an enemy six times, each dealing 30% uh, uh, attack and enlightenment fire damage with a chance of inflicting one stack of burn. Imagine pairing this champion with Flora, with all the multi-hits, with all the multi-hits. Then the ultimate, 
bombards all enemies on the field three times, each dealing attack and lightning damage uh, with a 60% chance of inflicting two stacks of burns. So he's a very good enabler for uh, our exclusive with a, with, a, with a burn, you know. He lands a lot of burn, which is good. Then we have the one that we summoned before, uh, Qua Quasitia, Quasitia. She looks so, so badass. I love the design. I love the dark team design, man. She's a defense-based hero. Increases all allies' defense in arena. When taking damage, there's a chance of inflicting recharge speed penalty on the attacker for 5 seconds. The hero takes 30% less damage from basic attacks. I like this recharge speed penalty on the attacker because everybody will attack her if you're positioning her, uh, her on, the, on the right place on, a, on the map, if you're positioning her there, you know. And this, this can affect El Sibri and many other strong champions. Then, the battle skill drags the farthest enemy towards the hero, inflicting it with uh, fear. Uh, is knocking up the, the enemy and puts healing prohibition, which is going to be nice. Very, very nice, actually. Very, very nice. The one thing that I'm not a fan of, uh, of the hero is the damage is based on attack and the ultimate attacks the target area three times, each dealing attack damage to enemies within range, reducing their ultimate energy while granting attack healing. And the problem is the hero will heal based on attack, you know? That's my, my main issue. The third attack has a 100% chance to knock up the enemies and put attack down on them. Steel is a, is a nasty one. I wouldn't rely on this hero as healing a lot from the stats that, uh, that it has. If you're building the hero with uh, high defense, you know, but it's still going to be something on, on top of it, you know. She look like Kerrigan. I, I'm not sure who, who that is. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the character. Then we have Zorak, which is an Ice Blast. He looks pretty nice as a, as a, as a character. Love the dragon hand that he has in, on his, uh, on his, uh, think there. Starcraft, okay. So when an ally casts a spell that consumes ice crystals, the hero fires an icicle at the current target, dealing derivative damage with a chance of gaining one stack of ice crystal. So he is the version of uh, the pirate or flora or other characters that deal derivative damage. And the thing is, if you are building a nice ice crystal team, I feel like they have the potential to put in some serious, serious work, you know. Then we have uh, fires an icicle at an enemy dealing uh, attack and enlightenment cold damage, consumes all the hero's ice crystals. Every stack of ice crystal consumed launches an additional ice uh, Icicle dealing attack and lightning enlightenment damage, you know. Mafare, hello, hello. Changing a little the subject. Yesterday you said a budget team wouldn't make it on Faye. You've done it. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. I was actually very curious. I, I recorded the video today and I was like, guys, if you manage to do it, let me know. Let me know. So that's, I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad to hear that. I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah. Video it or it didn't happen. <laughs> On tier 2 Vortex, 180 million damage ice team. Oh, wow. But this is going to be an interesting hero too. Grants damage up to all Ice Blast allies for 10 seconds with a chance of granting them a stack of Ice Crystals. Meanwhile, all Ice Blast allies gain the effect of Zorak's passive skill for 15 seconds. Can you imagine... He's passive on all the Ice Blast heroes dealing damage like he does. It's crazy. It's going to be very, very nasty. So they're definitely working on bringing in different, uh, different champions for all the elements that can do insane damage in the Vortex and just generally, you know, which is very good. Then we already checked the Malak before, so we're not going to go over, uh, over him again. With this hero, yeah, I would expect it, yeah. You don't have Journey. Yeah, Journey is a pretty good one too. Then the, the, the character that answers all your questions in game, Rose. She's a support from the Radiance element. And when the hero has a buff, the enemy cannot resist debuffs inflicted by the hero. So that's nice because if you buff her a bit, you're not really going to need the accuracy on her instantly. 
deals attack damage and enlightenment to enemies within range with a chance of putting recharge speed penalty and the hero gains enlightenment. The ultimate casts the spell four times, each dealing 80% uh, attack and 800 enlightenment to a random enemy and the enemies around it with a chance to put attack penalty. Meanwhile, it heals all allies uh, surrounding the random enemy based on the target's max HP and enlightenment and a chance to dispel a debuff from them. The hero casts the spell one extra time for every 100 enlightenment they have, up to six times with each cast of this skill. So if you're gaining, if you have on the character 600 enlightenment, she will cast this spell six times. Six times, it's, it's crazy, huh? Then we have Nisa, another Thunderbolt uh, hero, and from here on, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting because we're going to have uh, some uh, robots coming in, in play here, you know. So we have an uh, attack in a series of trials, 45% for all the team. And at the start of the combat, releases a mechanical creature to follow the nearest enemy, keeping them inflicted with electrocuted. When the follow target dies, the mechanical creature will uh, reselect an enemy to follow, which is nice because it invokes uh the electrocuted on the enemy all the time you know deals uh, attack damage to the enemy with a chance to inflict electrocuted on them for eight seconds then triggers thunderbolt once if the enemy is under electrocuted the ultimate skill targets an enemy instructing mechanical creatures to follow the target and initiate an electric field that centers around the target for 10 seconds when an enemy is inflicted with electrocuted mechanical creatures trigger thunderbolt on them two times and deal 120% attack derivative lightning damage to all enemies within the electric field. Very, very interesting uh, champion right here. I love the idea of mechanical creatures just crawling around the map, you know, trying to, to, to defeat the enemies. Stega Morphine, another support from the poison element. Attack uh, for all battles. When the hero deals damage to an enemy, there's a 25% chance to inflict one of these debuff randomly for 5 uh, seconds, you know. And is attack penalty, recharge speed penalty, healing prohibition, accuracy, buff prohibition. This is going to be a very, very, uh, very good passive, you know. The battle skill deals attack damage to the enemy with the highest attack, marking it for 6 seconds. During the time, the hero will shoot an additional arrow at them when launching a basic attack, dealing additional attack damage. Now this is nice because you will uh, have a chance to mess their nuker up with his passive because you will mark them, you know, so that is interesting, that is interesting. You do want to have a lot of uh, attack speed on him for this though, to have a higher chance to uh, activate the passive, you know. Now you're stuck on 60 trials, Necro and Radiant though, it's, it's quite a bit of a, quite a bit of a, a a grinder. I used Drist on the on the Necro one because of the AoE damage. He was killing the dealing damage on the boss and on the side minions. On the Necro was almost impossible to kill the side minions. So I just went boom. The ultimate summons a magic nexus that lasts 8 seconds in the target area, dealing attack poison damage to enemies within range every one second. While the magic nexus exists, enemies who Die in the uh, in it cannot be resurrected. So here's a pretty interesting one blocking revive. Then where are we? We have a couple more here and then we're done, guys. We have Dalk, a defense tank, necrosis, accuracy in uh, arena, attacks the enemy with the highest attack at the start of the combat, dealing uh, damage to the target, and uh, inflicts 30 stacks of attack penalty. That is 30% decrease attack. The target loses one stack for every one second for the next 30, uh, 30 seconds. The battle skill, attack penalty, of course, on the on the enemy. And the ultimate gains accuracy up and uh, deals damage to the enemy with the highest HP, reducing their ultimate energy. And is banishing the enemy, guys. So banishing is a new thing of debuff, a new debuff, a new type, sorry. The target will disappear temporarily from the battlefield in which it cannot neither move nor be selected. So nasty if you have a lot of uh, a lot of skill haste on him and just banish one of their most OP support champions, you know, is is nuts. Then we have a uh, Shy Nakhtan. 
another thund Thunderbolt. He looks pretty nice too. Very, very nice design. Enlightenment Aura, you have a uh, lightning, uses lightning to strike up to two random enemies, inflicting uh, electrocuted every four seconds, dealing lightning damage with a chance of inflicting electrocuted for eight seconds. The battle skill on a single enemy deals attack and enlightenment damage up to two random enemies and has a chance of inflicting electrocuted for eight seconds. The ultimate grants attack up to all Thunderbolt allies for 10 seconds. Then deals attack and enlightenment damage to enemies within range with a chance of inflicting electrocuted. So he's a very good enabler for uh, the ones that are dealing even more damage than he does, you know. And one of my most favorite and my most wanted from this uh, season, the second probably most wanted, is uh, Paesa support. Uh, accuracy in all battles. The passive increases your chance for all of your allies to land debuffs by 20%, decreases the chance for all the enemies to land debuffs by 20%, even when the hero is dead. And this is massive for all the content. Massive for all the content. Grants damage reduction and damage delay to the entire team with the battle skill. Such a powerful, such a powerful battle skill, guys. And the ultimate deals attack damage, blinds the enemy, recharge speed penalty, and gives immunity. So again, a very, very powerful uh, ultimate. Layla Fox coming in with the raid. Whoop, 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 whoop. Welcome, everybody. Appreciate the raid, Layla. How was the stream? How was the stream? Can we get a shout out for Layla Fox, please, guys? What's up? Arena, Arena MPV as well. Arena MPV too. Like, it's going to be a massive carry for Feymander, the Pillar of Trials, where you're going to struggle, you know? If you guys haven't checked out Layla Fox, make sure you guys head over and drop her a follow. She does amazing, amazing content. But this is definitely one of my most wanted ones. Then we have uh, Durem, a burn hero. We have uh, an enemy's burn is dispelled, triggered, or expired. Deals attack damage to the enemy and surrounding enemies, which is, is pretty interesting. The battle skill locks onto three random enemies and fires missiles at them, each dealing attack uh, damage to enemies within range with a chance of inflicting a burn. And the ultimate bombs the target area, dealing damage to enemies within range three times while ignoring 15% of the target's defense uh, on enemies that are under burn. Also grants attack up and crit damage up to all burn allies for 10 seconds, which is definitely pretty, pretty nice. And we have one more in here, which is the new, the new type of heroes, the new race, the mermaids. And we have uh, Shina Ice Blast, attack in series of trials. You have the the passive. If the hero has Ice Crystal after casting a battle skill, casts it again by consuming one stack of Ice Crystal. When granting Ice Crystal to Ice Blast allies, the hero will additionally grant attack up. That lasts for 10 seconds to all Ice Blast allies, up to 10 times. The battle skill generates a frost bomb after a brief channeling, dealing attack cold damage to enemies. Generates an extra frost bomb for each stack of ice crystal the hero has. Each time a frost bomb hits the trigger, uh, the target, sorry, there is a chance of granting a stack of ice crystal to an ice blast ally. And the ultimate continuously casts the spell for six seconds. During this period, strikes a random enemy every five, uh, 0 0.5 seconds, each time dealing attack all damage with a chance of inf uh, granting a stack of Ice Crystal to all Ice Blast allies. So overall, the chance will go up to 65% chance, and if each one of the, the hit will uh, grant one, or will have a chance to grant one, will be awesome, yeah? You hear that... Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons do promo with the game. Yes, they do, actually. We had uh, Drist and Earth to the Baller coming in Season um, season 1. And in Season 2, we'll have a new, a new collaboration. But we are not uh, aware yet of what heroes, what bosses are coming to the game. The game does have orcs in it, yeah. So this is the last Legendary, guys. We have some epics which are fairly, fairly interesting, too. The Mad Bomber here, a very good burn champion. 
When the hero and the summon units deal damage to enemies inflicted with burn, has a chance of triggering, uh, triggering blast. Then deals attack fire damage to enemies within range and has a chance of inflicting one stack of burn on them for 10 seconds. And then, of course, summons the self-made turret, guys. Which shoots in straight line. This is actually pretty, pretty interesting. Then we have uh, Arasis. Pre damage in all battles. When the hero deals damage to the enemy with a basic attack, there's a chance of inflicting a stack of burn for 10 seconds. Gains attack shield for 5 seconds, then deals attack fire damage to enemies. Uh, we have the ultimate, deals attack fire damage to enemies within range. If the targets are under burn, dispels all burn from them. Every stack dispel deals additional damage. So, not, not a bad uh, burn hero. Love the art game. But it plays a bit slow tempo for your taste. Gotcha. I feel like it's slow tempo when you start and then you are really into pushing mode in the end game when you're doing the, the world bosses in the other world event. Then you have the the resurgent dragon or whatever boss uh, you have, you know. So this is a Thunderbolt epic, guys. When the enemy is electrocuted, it's triggered, reduces the hero's current battle skill recharge time by 10%. The skill only takes effect every 3 seconds. The battle skill deals uh, attack damage to enemies within range with a chance to put electrocuted. And gains attack up for 10 seconds, dealing uh, attack damage to enemies within range. If the enemies are under electrocuted, deals extra damage. And triggers Thunderbolt once. This is, this is going to be a lot of damage. This will be a very good hero. Then we have the Ice Blast. Uh, attack aura in dungeons. If the hero has ice crystals after casting a battle skill, consumes one and casts the skills again. Uh, upon obtaining ice crystals, the hero gains crit damage. Then uh, strikes an enemy twice, each dealing 290% damage. Then the hero gains crit rate bonus for 5 seconds. Uh, gains one stack of ice crystals immediately if the skill kills an enemy. So it's not going to be that powerful against bosses because of it, you know. You're not going to kill. Jumps towards an enemy, dealing attack cold damage and gaining one stack of ice crystal. They've added 30, uh, 30 plus champions, yeah. Uh, I don't think they've mentioned anything about rebalancing just yet. Uh, I'm sure they are considering it. I haven't checked every hero if they rebalanced, rebalanced them or no. But I think they actually did something to UTR. I remember somebody talking about it. We're going to check in a second. So this is another burn one, an accuracy aura. For each enemy inflicted with burn on the field, the hero gains a stack of attack up. Then uh, the battle skill is going to bounce, casts a fireball that can bounce between enemy up to five times, dealing fire damage to enemies upon hit, with a chance of inflicting a stack of burn. The fireball will prioritize enemies that are not inflicted with burn, which is nice, and deals attack damage to enemies within range, and triggers blast on enemies inflicted with burn. Then we have uh, Sadik, another Ice Blast hero. If the hero has Ice Crystal after casting a battle skill, casts it again by consuming one stack of Ice Crystal, the hero skill has a 50% chance of ignoring 30% of the enemy defense, which is pretty interesting. The battle skill strikes the enemy three times, each dealing damage increases the damage of the skill by 10% for each time this skill is cast in battle, and it can stack up to 10 times. I think uh, Thunderbolt will be better, in my opinion. I think Thunderbolt will be better. But the Ice Blast can be very nasty as well. I feel like uh, all of them, they're really filling in the, the gap. I feel like they will be good, uh, good additions. The ultimate deals 720% attack cold damage to enemies within range, with a chance of gaining stack of Ice Crystal. And we have two more heroes in here. Manda, which is another thunder, uh, Thunderbolt. The hero and the... Uh, Turrets will prioritize enemies that are not inflicted with electrocuted. In addition, each time the hero and the turret successfully inflict electrocuted, each turret gains one stack of attack up. The battle skill summons a turret which occupies one tile on the battlefield and has a certain amount of HP with a limited duration. It will attack enemies at regular intervals. There can be up to two turrets on the battlefield at the same time. When the turret number reaches the upper limit, Casts this skill again to fully restore the HP, guys. This is what Drist needs in his kit for the Panther, honestly. 
And the ultimate grants attack up and attack speed to all turrets for 10 seconds. And the chance of inflicting electrocuted is increased uh, by 40 per to 40%. Very curious to see how that plays out. And of course, we have one more Ice Blast. Uh, HP in all battles. If the hero has Ice Crystal after casting a battle skill, casts it again by consuming a stack of Ice Crystal. When the hero skills triggers a critical hit, there's a 20% chance of granting a stack of Ice Crystal to one Ice Blast uh, ally. And you have the battle skill. It strikes the enemy twice with a chance of uh, inflicting a critical hit. 20% extra chance, actually. Grants attack up. For 10 seconds and uh, two stacks of ice crystal and the uh, ice crystal ally with the highest attack then strikes the enemy three times i feel like this could potentially be good for arena then strikes the enemy three times each dealing 260 percent attack cold damage with an additional 20 percent chance of triggering a critical hit so you only need 80 critical hit on him and i feel like he is i feel like he is the ice blast tunnel nun. I feel like he is the Ice Blast Tunnel, and maybe. Not so insane, but potentially, you know. They have very similar, uh, very similar kits there. So that is uh, pretty much for, uh, for the new heroes, guys. And what we should do right now is let's go and explore a bit the new, the new area. Let's go and explore a bit the new area. Let's start from here. I'm not sure if we have a linear uh, linear path with content of what we should do, but seems like we do. So let's actually follow that. Assuming that it won't uh, be related to season uh, season one. So let's see quick. Is it related to the season one story? What were because this is a test server that never really completed the season one storyline, you know. So I'm curious to, to see. I think this guide reset area monster. Okay, so let's see. Where, where is it sending us? I think this is related to season one. Come now, leave it to me. Your faithful Bart shall regale thee. So the game has a massive lore story, guys. If you're fans of it and you haven't played it yet, you know. This, this is definitely the jam for you. Key, thank you for the follow. What's up? Welcome to the stream. So will it push us to summon maybe? Yeah, this is definitely season one story. Okay. Or maybe it's not. We have the bombers there. The new season will have new chapter quests, okay? So train a hero to level 20. We're gonna do that uh, in a bit, but let's see. Keep on on the chapters, you know. Clear goblin layer three times. Clear flay domain. Fully explore the ruined trade route. But I do think this is part of the the new season, actually, because this area only opens later. Okay. So this is part of the, the new season, I think. Yeah. Probably we just have to check a couple of things before we are uh, going on, on our new journey. Ooh, this is Evil Vorash. This looks actually sick as a legendary. I know it's kind of like a Vorash, but it looks pretty nice. Will it be time-gated again? I would assume so. I would assume so. But it's fine, because that gives you time to, to build your teams, bro. You know, you can focus on different things. We'll check you here in a second, by the way. Remind me if I forget, please. Because all... All that the time gated content does to you is it allows you to basically build your characters, build your teams, and just get more familiar with them, you know. 
Let's go. Let's go in big, you know. Let's go in big and like this for not going home, basically. So we will have a new elemental affinity as well, guys. Since we're starting the fight, let's actually check that out too. In season one, we had fire and poison. We had lightning and radiance, necrosis and frost. Well, in season two, we will have brand new elemental affinity combo and this will change every season. How you may notice, we have necrosis and fire. We have lightning and poison and we have frost and radiance as the elemental affinity uh, combinations. And I feel like we will be able to create some very, very uh, nasty teams, you know. So let's let's actually bring in uh, the new tank, maybe. Let's bring the new tank. And U tier, since we're talking about U tier. I don't need to use all these champions here, but I'm still putting them in. Streak, what's up? Happy gaming. Happy gaming to you as well. How is it going? So increases the, the aura. I feel like when any other hero unit dies, gains 10% ultimate energy. So before on, on a U tier was when any ally unit dies, right? Was it like that? So now when any hero unit dies, it increases the ultimate energy, which is good. It's better than it was. The battle skill is not bad. You're dealing uh, attack penalty and healing prohibition. And the ultimate skill grants defense up and resurrection on that to all allies, covering the entire map. So he's not bad. You can use him, of course. Would be nice to get some healing, though. Would be nice to get some healing from somewhere. Not just the ultimate energy, but... You got Bion Frey, is he good? He's decent, he's decent. Hello to everyone. Do we have spoilers in here? We are actually in the middle of spoilers. So spoiler alert, guys. Spoiler alert. Because we are about to embark on, a, on our quest. Quest journey for season two. So Bion Frey is not the best tank, but he's, he's pretty decent. What is the best build for Bion Frey for Arena? I mean, you want him... You want him to be tanky, but you want some skill haste and accuracy on him at the same time. Don't build damage or anything like that on him at all, you know? Make sure you have accuracy, make sure you have survivability, you know? We have no equipment on them, but we're gonna put some in a second. Is UTR even obtainable if you're not a whale? If you're saving your summons, yeah. If you're saving your summons, yeah. The UTR event starts, what, like 30 plus days in the season? We will have a new hero this time around. I think it's pretty interesting as well, you know? And uh, if you're not opening your summons from the beginning and you're saving for that event, yeah, you can do it. I think it's going to be very hard if you're a brand new player that started that season and you're uh, completely free to play or very low spender. It's going to be a massive challenge and you might struggle to, to get that done. But if it's your next season, for example, it's, it's doable. Yeah, it's, it's a hard ask for a first season. Yeah, I know. So just keep the hero, you know, it's fine. You don't necessarily need it. There are plenty of others. Focus on uh, building your roster with the other heroes. As long as they're not completely game-changing heroes that, wow! you know, will be like the most insane heroes ever, you're fine. So here we are, guys. We are embarking on the new on the new quest line here. So spoiler alerts. If you are uh, interested to go and check this by yourself, you will have to wait for the season two to start. But we only have a bit left, you know. So we're going to be able to explore a brand new map that will take us underwater as well of course it's not just this that you're seeing here guys you have quite a few different uh, locations which is good filto filto is another champion that i really really want to get so let's let's head over to rescue our uh, our character you know i might not be able to because i don't think i unlocked all that yet huh? But seems like I have to.
Uh, Cure Angel, from what I'm aware, no. Uh, it will be different for all of them. I do hope that in the future they will change this, though. Because most of the people are a bit confused by it, you know. So what I need to check is at my Psyche Core. I think I haven't selected an identity. Or I did, actually, okay. For whatever reason, was not allowing me to, to move the, the cage there. Huh? Let's just quickly fort something. Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, honestly. The intervener's hand. Why is it not letting me get that one? Like, I should have this on, no? I have my identity. Unless I need to complete something else, but this is literally part of the quest right now. It's so, so, so strange. Hmm. That is very strange, though. So one of the new, new features that have been added to the game, guys, and they're actually... Pretty, pretty cool. Are, uh, I mean, it's this one. Check this out. Bang. You can instantly, instantly max your hero like that if you have all the materials needed. Pretty cool, huh? And where is my Thunderbolt? My Thunderbolt hero. There you are. There you are. Wow, imagine to have so many skill scrolls on your account. You like the quick upgrade? Yeah, it's nice, huh? Let's give him his exclusive. So I think he needs a... Okay, attack, landing damage. Okay, okay. So he... I, I don't know why I thought that he needs a... He needs a... Enlightenment, but he doesn't, no. Electrocuted does derivative damage, so... I don't think that will be... Affected by his stats though. Because that's the debuff, you know. So I think I don't think it will. I do not think it will. Should we go with a, a gambler set or should let's try a new set actually? So the Emperor's Might was the skill haste and the damage in between the stats. Let's go with the in inventor top aspiration. So let's see crit rate. Ooh. Yes, please. Oh, they changed the refine refinement system to the way you do it. This is much better, actually. Because that was constantly... Oh, triple enlightenment, seriously? You ruined the best piece ever there? Wow. Yeah, do me dirty. Because you can st still see the total stats. Before, when you were clicking on them, was messing up the screen, was taking you on a different one, and was not... Was not that fun. Yep, 
Yeah, a lot of things are smoother. That's that's what they're doing, and they've they've done a great job as well. And that was the same from season uh season zero to season one. You know, from Beta to. Are exclusive heroes only obtainable in that specific season? No, exclusive. Exclusive is the artifact. So they have exclusive artifacts which are only working on those characters, which are generally more powerful than the rest. You know. So they have kind of like the Mera, the OP heroes, which are harder to get, I would assume, which are the exclusives. But they're not exclusive to the season or anything like that. Only if Raid could, uh, could learn. And guys, because this, this video will be uploaded on the Raid channel, okay? You have zero cost at at swapping gear. You have presets on your teams and you can just swap the gear from your characters to a completely different team like this. You can save presets on your champions so you can have the same champion build with 20 different builds if you want. You have so many amazing QOL things. And if that's not a, a reason for you guys to try out the game, I don't know what it is. Next to the fact that it looks amazing. Link in the description down below or in the pinned comments, guys. Or if you're in Twitch or on Twitch right now, you can download it by clicking on the link that you're seeing in chat or by clicking on the panel that is below the chat as well, guys. Available on pretty much every device made by humankind except the, the consoles. Available to download on PC through the Epic Stores, through Steam, on a Mac, on iOS, on Android. They have their own client that can be used directly from their website and you just download the client. That's what I'm, uh, uh, I'm personally using. Okay, I want something that gives me a lot of crit rate. That's 12. I gotta say, I've been pretty unlucky with my, uh, with my gear on Season 1. A lot, of, a lot of bad rolls. So I'm definitely hoping that the game will step it up for me this season. In season two. Let's see. Do we have an attack one? Just oh, this is nice. This is a nice one though. Please give me quad crit rate. Not even one, okay. Not even one. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Who said that we need that? You know, like we don't need crit rate. Anyone said that we need crit rate, guys? I think going with crit rate gloves will be just smart because we're going to get a lot of crit damage from other areas, you know, so. This is a good one. Okay, not bad rolls. We're getting, we're getting some survivability on, on him as well. So we fill the full set. We have 86 crit rate. Let's actually max this as well. I have plenty of uh, essence of uh, creation. Oh, this... Oh, wait. Did I click on the wrong one? Yeah, I did. I was like, what the... What the heck? How did I got crit rate? There we go. 80 crit damage. So we're good with the crit damage. We're good with that. Once we're going to put... Ex uh, Runes as well will definitely be good. And right now we can use whatever. But I want attack, crit rate, and crit damage on the piece. And it seems like we only have two from all the sets, which is fine. Okay, much better rolls on this one. Much better rolls on this one. Much, much better. So we're looking for attack percentage and crit damage. Okay, or maybe, maybe no crit damage because it's going to be a crit damage main. Okay, that's one. Epics, better ones maybe. So let's see if we're looking for attack and crit damage instead. Because we want to have some skill haste. Attack speed is, is going to be good too. I don't care so much about uh, getting uh,
crit rate from it. This is perfect. This is perfect. Literally perfect. Because I only I only lack seven crit rate. I could look on one of them here, you know, maybe I get a better one from here that might give me crit rate. So we have attack primary. We can check them all. Crit rate, defense, HP. Let's see what's the roll at 4. Defense, no. Attack and attack percentage. Crit rate, maybe. Crit damage, no. Attack speed. Okay, so there are many options here. Skill haste. I was gonna say, maybe an epic, that's better. <laughs> Dragon's graphics are better than Raid, yeah, 100%. Like, there's no doubt in there, bro. There's no doubt on there at all, yeah. I... I I like the character design more as well. They're more dark, more evil, you know. They fit they fit uh, in this team much better, in my opinion. So, Perkunte finally built. And we have 45k HP, almost 46. 2k defense, 5.2k attack, 97 crit rate, 218 crit damage. Very, very nice. The only problem is I need some accuracy for the electrocuted. <laughs> I just realized that. So maybe maybe we go with an accuracy accuracy uh, negative rune here. This one is beautiful. Look at it. Shame it rolled triple flat attack. What is this one rolling? Oh, this is... This li literally perfect. Full crit right now as well. Only 96 uh, accuracy, but that's fine. For the lower levels that we're gonna fight right now, is is okay. That's nice, huh? It's nice to see full crit rate. And we'll see a good. Uh... Ah, he's an ice crystal one actually. Let's see what other good uh, enablers we might have in here. Yeah, so he's he's going to be the champion that will uh, land electrocuted for us here. I feel like he's the best option. I cuz she's summoning, right? The Yeah. But she's interesting too. But let's build this one. And then we're gonna see how a uh, Thunderbolt works. Max skills, bank. And what should we give you? What should we give you? We want to have as much uh, Thunderbolt on as possible, right? So let's let's give him Rift Hourglass. That's going to be helpful. We want to have as much skill haste as possible. So I, I don't care about him dealing damage or anything uh, anything like that. Perfect. We want to have an accuracy one with skill haste. We have one, two, let's try to see which ones, which one of them will give me more skill haste. 18, I'll take that. And then we're going to run double, uh, double skill haste set. So we have... I want to see the rarity, I want to see the, the set, you know. There we go. Which one had, so we had the Moonlight's Blessing, we had which had accuracy and uh, skill haste. So let's go crit rate. That's good. 
I'll go two and two. But actually, wait. I need to try and get an increased attack on him as well, too. But I'll put it on a different character, actually. I'll put that on a different character. But right now, the good part is that we have multiple uh, sets that give us skill haste, too, you know? Beautiful. It's exactly what we need. And here, attack or whatever, really. It doesn't really matter that much. Yes, we can take this one. Yep, not bad. Let's quickly max the gear. I'm only going to put gear on three characters because they will carry the, the rest, you know. And then if we're going to try something a bit more uh, more spicy, we'll, uh, we'll do that too. I do feel like something is a bit messed up when you're selecting your uh, artifacts like that. Your artifacts, your gear. Because uh, it's kind of like taking you to a different piece. Or I'm clicking on something, you see? Like it's not popping it instantly. You got to double click it or something. That's new. That's, that's pretty new. Let's get her up and running too. Nisa. What can you do, Nisa? You want to show us? I want to see how her uh, little, uh, little machine will work. So she will need accuracy as well. At the start of the combat, releases a mechanical creature, keeping them inflicted with electrocuted. I would assume, I would assume so. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna give her some random random gear now. I think she needs accuracy. I won't really build her that much for damage necessarily, but let's actually give her the Tempest War drum, you know. Like right now I'm trying to pick the side, but you gotta go back and that's that's how you're playing it out. Back, back, and you gotta come to all sets. So this is still a bit a bit putting you putting you off, you know. Summon and inspire them. Yeah, I'll probably do that as well, yeah. Thing is that takes quite a bit, and I wanna see them without inspiration, just you know how most of us will use them anyway. But I'm just going to chuck a couple of pieces of gear that I have leveled up, you know, and I'm not really going to stress so much about what stats they're, they're going to have these heroes, you know. Actually, let's go for the skill haste one more. No, I haven't played uh, that game actually, no. I mean, the, the gaming world is so, so big and there's so many games nowadays, it's just hard not to have similarities in terms of uh, character designs and stuff. It's close to impossible, literally. But I'm actually going to go for, a, for an accuracy set because I think we're going to need the accuracy here, wait. I'm not going on crazy damage build with this anyway. But maybe maybe the 
the the ro robot doesn't need it, you know. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but we'll see. She does have quite a quite a good attack. What do we have? Attack speed. I like that too. Come on, give me some crit. Nice. And accuracy wise for whatever we're going to try today is, is fine. Well, actually, there is one accuracy one. Let's use it. Okay, so we have Three Thunderbolt heroes ready to ready to rumble. My problem is that for whatever reason, it was not letting me to to leave the cage. I don't know why though. It's so strange. Ah, there you go. I want to get Filto on my main on my main account though. He's so powerful, Filto. So we gotta follow this bad boy, huh? Where are you taking me, Filto? Okay. Lucenia did an amazing job for me in the in the tournament, guys. With the frost team. She did a good job for me. What do we have in there? Okay, target points, five. So, the dice element, guys, for whoever is not familiar, is uh, kind of like showing you the RNG, you know? So, it's nothing nothing unfamiliar. It's just basically the RNG displayed, you know? And it's, it's a pretty cool, uh, cool idea to have it like that. Oh, poor Losenia. Are you sure that you want to do this? Like, seriously? Do you really want to do this? I'm not going to put more heroes because I'm scared. She's going to get destroyed. <laughs> you just do, do like this, you know? <laughs> you just do like this and she's, she's down. But I'm going to try to go and uh, pick a dungeon or something. But actually, let's, let's go and see how uh, they will play out in uh, some different content. And we'll come back to this maybe after. Kind of want to focus on the characters, though. They look pretty cool. I'm curious to try that one out. I don't tend to read the story personally, guys. I'm not really a lore, uh, a lore guy, generally. I know some of you guys are. Some of you are not. So this is one of the, the new areas. Plus, we have many other areas too. It's, this is not all, you know. Let's let's go to one of these things. Let's go to one of these things. Which one should we try first? Let's go there. Level 70. Let's go level 130. New one? I'll, I'll go to new one in a second too. I wasn't sure if they have AoEs in there or no. So I said I'll, I'll come to this one. So lightning is with... With poison, right?
Lightning with poison. Yeah, it's the test server, so I have thousands of everything. It's crazy. Like, look at all the scrolls. You know, it's cool. It's cool. It's definitely cool to have it. No. No. So, I, I think I'm going to go with uh, this set. And I'm going to give him a one and one you know? So, we want to have HP defense, preferably, and accuracy we can get on him. This one looks fine. Just because uh, I want to get a attack up, you know? Beautiful, nice, nice accuracy there. And for the other, the other one, I think I'll be going with uh, an ancestral protection. Actually, I need to go a full set from uh, from that, from the series. What am I talking about? The three piece. But the main needs to be defense. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that will that will work probably. Unless I find a better one from a different set, but that's fine too. So I need accuracy on on as well. Let's see. One or the other, one or the other. Okay, that give me attack. I don't want that. We don't need. We don't need attack. It is better. This is better. His accuracy is still pretty low, though. So defense, crit rate, accuracy. Defense percentage. Yeah. We cover. Beautiful. Look at this. We have everything that we need on it. Double accuracy roll too. And now we put an accuracy one and we should be ready to rumble. Some skill haste and defense percentage would be nice though. Not even asking for much. And honestly, the fourth, the fourth champion doesn't even matter here anymore. Let's just put Vicar here. <laughs> we have food? No, no food. Huh? Oh, what are you missing? What do you mean? Didn't I... Or have I selected the wrong character, maybe? Ah, yeah, I've, I've, I've selected the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking, like, what? Get out of here. We want to see after when the, the AOE pops in and let's see a bit the, the damage. I want to see the animations and everything on the skills though. So they have electrocuted on and it's all about derivative damage from here on, you know. Now I'm not sure if, if you have enlightenment. Can you increase the damage from... Ooh, look at that. Wow. That is badass. That is badass. Okay, now I want I want this hero even more now. I want the hero even more now. That was so badass. What an animation and the the way he's just striking with the with the bolts. So awesome. Okay, we lost Vikirk, that's fine. I got I'm melting this boss. I gotta do the next difficulty.
But when he's gonna get his ultimate... Okay, there we go, the mechanical... Ah, uh... oh, no, that was the ultimate, no mechanical thing either. Look at that again, guys. Boom, look at the, the damage, is crazy too, huh? I wanted to see the AoE. That that was kind of like the main thing that I wanted to see, you know. So put electrocuted on it. I don't know why I expected that the uh, the Nisa will summon a actual machine chilling out, but seems like she's just sending like that little ball into the into the enemy and stays there like a. Uh... Yeah, I I want him, I want him, I want him. Let's see. What's with the Grave of Venom? Of course, we gotta beat each one of the stages, but let's let's check the first one. So we have four orbs now. And this one... What, they, what are they all doing? So, deals poison damage to all enemies and dispels one debuff from all allies, okay? Deals poison damage to enemies within range. So you cannot use the same strategy where you're kind of like uh, putting characters in different positions on the map. Deals poison damage to enemies within range. Selects an enemy with the highest max HP and strikes them three times, dealing poison damage. Flame of element. Poison will assist in the battle following each strike. Then the next one. Deadly Harpy's attack have a 30% chance of triggering the assistance of Flame of Element Poison, whose target always remains the same as Deadly Harpy. Every debuff on Flame... That feels pretty much the, the same though. I cannot see the, the Harpy skills. Yeah, I cannot see that. It's not really gonna work as healing anyway here though, so. Let's see. She's gonna die quick anyway. We we're trying to get to the highest difficulty anyway. Grave of Venom. Not only that this uh, derivative damage from Electrocuted will be nice, but the main damage from the hero is feeling pretty good. I do I do tend sometimes to kind of like get, uh, get tricked into liking a hero and thinking he's so awesome just because I love the design till I really play him properly. But so far I'm loving this one, you know, like <laughs> he's awesome. He's awesome. I don't know if any of you guys are doing the same, huh? I don't know if any of you guys are doing the same. Boom, boom. Imagine with a defense down, that would be even better. Even better. So I gotta look into the... Into the dungeons for tomorrow, guys. To kind of like have an idea of what we prepare when we start the season, you know? 100%, yeah.
because uh, we will have to use completely different strategies than we were using before, more or less. Like for this for this dungeon as well, the old strategy is not going to work. So we need probably a different sort of uh, team here. Most probably. Just wait till we get to stage 9, how quickly I'm gonna get uh, wrecked on there. Yeah, so from here, the damage is not that crazy either, but we can put the speed back up because uh, we've seen the animations. They look pretty cool. I love the animation. I feel like the 2x speed might be even a bit faster than it was before. But that, I might be wrong. Okay. Here we go, here we go. This is an interesting combination, though. Poison and Lightning. You know what would be cool if in the future they bring some special sort of uh, connection in between heroes and the elemental bonuses will kind of like interconnect with each other and do extra damage. Imagine a, a, a poison cloud that gets hit by lightning and then more damage comes out of there and uh, things like that. That would be so, so cool. It used to be a battle royale game a while ago that used to have the elements working like that, but I cannot remember what. I cannot remember the name of that, but you that, that was a very cool idea. We got a bet the better understanding of uh how powerful are your characters in here, you know, is to kind of like take them on the high stage and uh, see all the damage, you know. Look at the AoE damage. The AoE damage plus the electrocuted being on them is just so disgusting. Like, I really want to get this hero. The AoE damage from him will be so, so sick. Wow. It's not just a good looking fella, you know, like. It will be just nasty. Plus the derivative damage coming from it too, you know. I think I think he will be nasty. I think he will be nasty. So what is this? Stage nine? Or we're on stage eight now? Okay. Can we survive this though? Because we are getting damaged like more seriously here, you know. Okay, I don't, I don't think we'll survive it like this. So we actually need to use proper proper strategy and a full team. But just as an idea, was was nice to, to see the damage. Look, we're already at 1.2 million damage, which was so, so crazy, huh? Okay. So we want to bring in some support in here. I don't, I don't think I need three damage dealers. And the whole idea with the, the hero... With the with the, the the boss, sorry, he still has one of these AOEs, which can be can be blocked. So if we put him there, then we had the heroes like this, right? Or was it like this the positioning? No, it was like this. Okay, so we gotta bring in. A healer right here at the back or at the front a anyway i need i need a a long a, a range hero to get a job done here so either either from here which let's be honest they're not that many nathaniel is good lolita she's good for a decrease attack but i think like 
we, we're gonna be able to get a better one from here. I don't think I need V-Cook, though. I mean, if we half him, you know, if we half him, can we say no to Ogot? Probably not. Probably not. Let's just build him quick. And then we have a five-man elemental team. Uh, and it doesn't really matter anyway, because uh, we don't have the active. But we have a full proper team as well, you know. Not sure what I'm gonna give you in terms of that, but we're definitely gonna go for some skill haste on you. And let's see. One or the other. That looks good. And then we go for another skill haste. We don't need the uh, accuracy on this hero at all. Should we just go for Ancestral Protection, Ian? I think that's good, yeah. Or we can actually go with a full uh, Monly set. So we're getting a bit of healing. We don't need we don't need the, the accuracy, you know. That kind of like it's like no no. We might we might use it actually on some on some other hero instead. Because why not? That should be 2x, I know, huh? It's, it's definitely much, much better. <laughs> Without a doubt. And because there are four, uh, four minions on this dungeon now, having a strong AoE attack... It's kind of like, uh, essentially in a way, it's going to be good, you know? Skill haste. Give me that skill haste. But I don't need to have the, the rest, though. Enlightenment. I think he needs some enlightenment, if I remember it correctly. This will do. And that will do too. Triple crit. And you are going to give us a bit of healing. So let's, 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 let's. Which one was the best healing? No. Or something looking similar. I'm still not, still not the best friend with all the legendary artifacts though. There we go. I think that he, his healing is based on enlightenment, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to give him this to start with, but let's check the skills. If I remember it correctly. Yeah, okay. So we're not, we're not wrong on that. So let's see if we can actually dodge the, the boss's AoE like this, maybe. So we're going to go with one. I have two, two melee in here. Is melee too? I forgot. But we have the immortality, which will help us quite a bit, though. It's not the same damage as, as a Radiance team, I'll be honest. Because, yeah, Radiance is Radiance, but still, it's not working too bad. And the boss, it seems like he's making more damage. My Furbar doesn't seem to have a chance to survive it, you know? He's just not healing enough as he used to be before. Why that damage though? That damage is is just nuts. The damage. Three point two million. Like it's like he's doing the whole damage alone. You know. 
<laughs> very, very nasty. Very nasty damage. Look at that. 70%, 3.3 million damage. So cool. So, so cool. No need to make any, any of the food here. How many of you guys got legendaries from the horn? Huh? Are we getting one right now? Maybe, maybe not. Next time, guys, we will do all the the story mode. We're, we're gonna we're gonna do some of the story mode, and then uh, we're gonna see what other things uh, will uh, will be doing. But I really wanted to kind of like go over the heroes, go over uh, over the gear sets and everything else that uh, is coming new with season two, the summoning events, and kind of like to give you a heads up, prepare you for uh, for for everything, you know, rather than just spoil the the entire season. But if you guys are new to the stream, if you guys haven't tried Dragon Air Silent Ghost just yet, you will have a, a link in chat or in the description or in the pin comment so you can uh, download the Dragon Air. Or of course you can click on the on the banner that you see below the below the chat. And uh, the game is now officially launched globally. It is available on PC. On uh, mobile devices, you can download it directly from their website. They have their own client. You can download it from Steam. You can download it from the Epic Store. You can download it on the iOS as well. You can download it on Mac. You can download it on Android. So it's a cross-platform game. You're never gonna never gonna skip a bit with the game. You can play it everywhere at any time. It is a Western high fantasy RPG game. Western graphics, you've seen the design on the heroes are absolutely top notch. And that's so, so important for a lot of us guys. I know, I know my audience very well and I know, I know how important it is to have awesome graphics on the characters. And trust me what I'm telling you, they are definitely delivering when we are talking about graphics. They just look very, very uh, good, all the heroes, you know, and um, yeah, the game does implement some tabletop uh, elements. They are doing a lot of collaborations with Dungeons and Dragons, where we have new characters, we have new uh, new bosses to fight, new quests, new storylines. We have uh, a lot of puzzles in the game to, that we got to solve a lot of different dungeons, a lot of bosses, and Season 2 is coming, guys. So in Season 2, we'll be getting a new map, we'll be getting a new storyline, new bosses, 30 plus new characters, new artifacts, new gear sets, everything that we cover so uh, so far in the in the video, you know, and it does look pretty damn awesome. I'm definitely hyped for it and cannot wait to do my summons on my account. But that was all for today's video. Big shout out to to Newverse for uh Newverse for sponsoring um, the stream and uh, the video, of course. Jump in and try out uh, Dragonair, guys, if you haven't done it yet. And guys, we're going to look to drop a raid on somebody as well. We'll be ending the stream. Got to go and sort out some uh, some dinner and some other uh, other goodies. Seems like uh, we have Ivy League Gaming streaming. So we're going to drop a raid on her. Show her some some love, you know. She is playing the, the same thing, most probably. She is doing Season 2 as well, which is good because... I'm she can spoil the story for you guys, so you don't blame me later on. But appreciate every single one of you guys tuning in, okay? Enjoy the rest of your morning, day, afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are in the world. And uh, stay safe. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do, you know? And uh, I will catch you all in tomorrow's stream, 5 p.m. UTC, Twitch TV. Make sure you click on that heart to get notified and... Uh, uh, see when we're going live next time. Appreciate all of you. Let's show some love to Ivy League Gaming, and I'll catch you all in tomorrow's stream. Peace.